the next thing we want to do is we want to because the program over here said that writes a program that lets the user enter the name of the of a team and then it displays the number of times that the team has won the World Series in the time period. Right? It gives a hint. It said when the user enters the name of the team, the program should step through the list, counting the number of times that the user, uh, the selected team appears. So let's create a function that is going to um, take a name or a team name from a user and search our list. Um, and, and basically count how many times that name that the user gave um, ha appears in the file. Basically, how many times that team has won uh, the World Series in the, in that given period. So I'm going to define a function, and I'm going to call it um, get winning times. Right? Get winning times. So if it's going to get winning times, then we need that list. Okay? We need that list. Uh, a list of all the winning teams, and so. <coughs> sorry I have this cough that I think I got from this hot chocolate I drank a while ago from school sorry so if it's going to get a winning times then it needs the list of winning teams so I'm going to define um, a, 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 a parameter for that I'm going to call it list of winning teams and so in our function the first thing we need is the users let's make sure this is indented properly course my system so we need a team, okay, that a user wants to search for, or you know, know how many times they won in, in our list. We need that team name. So I'm going to call the input function. Actually, no. Let, let's not do it in the function directly. Let's define this function in such a way that if it wants to get the winning 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 times, then it's um, the, whoever calls this function has to provide the team name, the team name they are searching for. So I'm going to define a parameter. I'm going to call it team name. Or let's just say winning team name. And then it also, whoever calls this function also has to provide a list of winning teams. And what we want to do in this, in this function over here is we want to loop uh, uh, through this list of winning team names, counting how many times this winning team name, okay? We can actually, let's actually call this user winning team name so we can we can tell that this is from the user so we're going to loop or go through this list of winning teams and count how many times this user winning team name um, appears in there so I'm going to create a for loop I like to use indexing okay to go through list or basically to you know create my loops because it gives you more control over the elements in the list or over basically over your loop it gives you more control so I'm going to create a target variable since we are looping through the list of winning teams at, at each time we are going through a, a winning team and so I'm going to create a target variable I'm going to call it for current winning team index I'm going to use index like I said I use in uh, like to use indexing uh, to go through my to go through a list or to create loops so for current winning team index in range I'm going to create a range and the range is going to be basically the length of the list of winning teams. So the len function pass in the list of winning teams. So for example, if this list of winning teams, let's say it contains 10 teams, then len, which is the length of the list, is going to be 10. So let's assume that this list of winning teams contains 10. Whatever list that the user passes when they call this function is going to be 10. So I'm going to type in 10 here just to explain. <coughs> Range of 10 will, this range function passing in 10 will create a range from 0 all the way to 9. 10 is not included in the range. 10 is like the ending limits, but it's not included in the range. So it's going to create a range from 0 to, uh, to 9. And as this loop is iterating, what's going to happen is these numbers 0 to 9 will be assigned to current winning team index. So the very first time this loop iterates, 0 will be assigned to current winning team index. And then we can use it in our loop. The second time it iterates, one will be assigned to current winning team index. And then you can use it in our loop. And the next time it iterates, two is going to be assigned to current winning team index. And these numbers will represent the index indexes or indices we can use to access the elements in the list of winning teams. <coughs> so the loop will still iterate ten times. But then it, this will create a range from 0 to 9. These 0 through 9 are representing the indexes, indexes or index, indices of all the elements in the list of winning teams. 
The first element in the list of winning teams will have an index of 0. Second element in the list of winning teams will have an index of 1. And then the last element, which is the tenth element, will have an index of 9. So 10 elements, but in indices 0 through 9. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to put in 10 here. Again, I'm going to undo. And it's going to be the length of whatever... Um, how, how many items are in this list of winning teams? All right, so if this list of winning teams contains 20 items, for example, it's going to create a range from 0 all the way to 19, and these numbers will be assigned to current winning team index, and we can use those to access elements in the list of winning teams. So what we want to do is we want to take each, um, each, each winning team and then check to see if it's equal to this user team user winning team name. And if it's equal to that, then we've, we've found 1. We are counting. We need to count, which means we need some kind of accumulator to count how many times this team, this current team here, has won, or how many times it appears in the file. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it winning times. Okay, winning times, I'm going to set it equal to zero initially because we're counting before we count it zero. So over here, while we are iterating through this um, list of winning teams, I'm going to say if at any time <coughs> the particular element we are on in the list of winning teams, okay, and I'm going to refer to that particular element by the current winning team index. If it's zero, we are referring to the first element. If it's one, we're referring to the second element, and so on and so forth. So it's if this particular um, winning team with index, current winning team index, is equal to, I'm using double equals to, to compare. Okay, double equals is I'm asking, is what on the right equal to what on the left? Don't use one equal sign, because when you use one equal sign, you're assigning what's on the right to what on the left. So I'm asking if at any time um, this particular team is equal to the user winning team name, if it's equal to that team name, then we want to count. We found one, so let's add one to winning team, sorry, winning times. So winning times is going to be equal to what's already stored in winning times plus one. We are accumulating, we are adding one to it. So the very first time winning times is equal to zero. So it's going to be zero plus one. Zero plus one will give us one. And we take one and we store it in winning time. The second time that I traded, we found that the current team is equal to the user team name that we, then we found it again in the list. So we add 1 to it. So winning teams will become 1. So 1 plus 1 will be 2. We take 2 and we store it in winning times. We are basically counting. We add 1 every time we find, find out that the particular team we are on in the list while we are iterating through it is equal to the user winning team name. Okay. So by the time this loop is done, we'll have the a number of times that this particular team appears in the list. So the number of times this particular team has won the World Series. And so when we are done, let's go ahead and return the winning times. Winning times. Now this here can also be written in a shortcut shortcut way. Okay. Winning times is equal to winning times plus one. You can write it as winning times plus equals one. You know, this is a shortcut. What does it mean? You, you can read it this way. You can say winning times, okay, is increasing by one you can read it that way or you can say one okay is being added to winning times so you can you can read it that way if it helps but i'm just going to take it back to how it works what it was winning times is equal to what's already stored in winning times plus one same thing one is a long version one is a shortcut All right so this will return our winning times and then the next thing I'm going to do is let's create a function that's going to print out those details for us. Okay. But the program said if we should display the number of times that the team has won the World Series in the time period. So I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call it print. Uh, let's call it print winning times. And so print winning times, let's display it in such a way that it says, okay, this team has won the World Series 10 times. This team has won the World Series two, two times. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. 
and so we need the team name so let's create this function in such a way that whoever calls this function has to provide the team name the winning team name and so I'm going to create the parameter for winning team name and then we also need how many times that team won so whoever calls this function also has to provide how many times this team won so I'm going to create a parameter for it I'm going to call it winning times you can call it winning team times or whatever it's just a parameter name something is going to replace it and so in this function we want to print out the message saying that this particular team when we have the team name here winning team name so winning team name comma I'm going to pass these arguments in here um, separately into the spring function so winning team name I'm going to pass a string saying has won the world series what, what is it called the world series It's called yeah world series and then the next argument is going to be winning times okay so by default okay so when you pass argument into the print function this way each of these arguments will be displayed with a space separate in them that's the default separator okay it displays separate each of them each of these arguments with the, with a space that's what this function is going to do all right the next function which you create is the main function now the main function in most programming languages is where the, your program is basically it's the function that calls every other function so it's good practice it sh you should actually create <coughs> sorry my, my cough is really um, becoming too much <coughs> so it's a good practice to, to create a main function that actually has your program okay it's going to call every other function so let's do that so I'm going to define a main function and this main function oops let's just hold on all right so this main function uh, it's going to have our program the first thing we want to do is let's try to open that file okay so I'm going to call re read winning team names from file to list it's a long name I'm, I'm copying it I'm going to call it and we know this function okay needs a file name to open so up here I'm going to declare that file name so the file name okay is going to be equal to we know the file name here, world series.txt. Also, we have it here, world series, world series winners.txt. Sorry. So the file name is world series winners.txt. I'm going to copy it here and paste it as a string. And I'm going to pass, I'm going to let's separate this a little bit so it's clear. I'm going to pass the file name to this function here. And we know that this, when we pass in the file name, it's going to return a list containing all the winning teams. So if it's returning a list of the winning teams, then I'm going to create a variable that's going to store it. That's going to store that list object or point to that list object. So I'm going to call it, sorry, I'm going to call it winning teams or winning teams list. It doesn't matter if it's the same name. I'll explain that in a second. So winning teams list this variable that I'm creating here is going to store whatever list is is being returned from the read winning teams <laughs> read winning team names from file to list function. We know it's returning a winning teams list. All right, so it doesn't matter if you have the same name. It doesn't matter. The scope of this variable is within the main function. The scope of this winning teams list var you know list here is within this read winning team names from file to list function. Okay, they are like twins, but they're they not the same. They are different because they are in two different functions. They, they don't see each other at all. So you can use the same names. All right, so we have our team uh, list. Now we can get the winning uh, times, okay? We have a function for that, so I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it. We know that this function needs the, you, you, the, the user, okay, the team name that the user is, wants to search for which is the user winning team name. We don't have it. So before that, let's let's ask the user. I'm going to call the input function. Now you could have created a function for this as well, but because it's only one line, I didn't see a need to. So I'm going to call the input function and we're going to ask the user to please enter the team name to search for something like this. <coughs> so the input function is going to display this message to the user and it's going to allow the user to type in something. Now, whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string. So if the input function is returning that value as a string, we need a place to store it. And so over here, I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it user winning 
team name. Uh, yeah, user winning team name. Again, it doesn't matter that it's the same name as this. So user winning team name. Oops, sorry. User winning team name is going to store whatever value the input function. Oops, I made a mistake here. All right. User winning team name is going to store whatever value the input function is returning, returning to us. Okay, so again, it doesn't matter these names are the same. The scope of this is within the main function. The scope of this user winning team name is within the get winning times function. Okay, they don't see each other. Okay, so now we have the user winning team name. So we know this get winning times function needs the user winning team name. We have it here, so I'm going to pass it to this function. And the next, uh, the next thing we uh, we need is a list of winning teams, which we have here, winning teams list. So I'm going to pass that also to this function. And we know this function returns the winning time. So when it's returning the winning times, we need a place to start. So I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it winning times. And winning times is going to store whatever winning times value you know is being returned by the get winning times function. Again, it doesn't matter that these names are the same. They're considered different because they're in two different functions.